In episode 15, we traveled to the National Museum of Health and Medicine, which is by far one of the most bizarre and extreme places that I've ever been. We also saw the bullet that killed Abraham Lincoln at that museum. In this episode, we're going to the very place where that bullet was fired at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. days ago uh, we were at the National Museum of Health and Medicine where we saw the bullet that killed Abraham Lincoln. Today I'm in Washington DC and we're at another place that is very closely tied with the assassination of Lincoln. We are at Ford's Theater where Lincoln was actually shot. Uh, I've always wanted to come and visit this place. Uh, definitely one of the spots in DC that is of very high historic significance. So, I uh, already got my ticket. Uh, we're gonna go in and we're going to explore Ford's Theater and see what we can learn. All right, so we're down in kind of the basement of Ford's Theater, which they've converted into a museum. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mosh pit down here right now. Pretty crowded, uh, even though we had tickets to get in. I guess they, they give out a lot of them because a lot of people want to see this place. We'll take a look at a few of the things they have down here though. It's uh, it's really crowded in here so I'm just going to kind of have to do the best that I can. And it's also a little bit dark but this is a quilt that was made in 1864 that features these signatures of a lot of prominent artists and politicians and military people. So there's Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, his signature is on there, William Tecumseh Sherman. And if you get up here, the very middle, there's the signature of Abraham Lincoln. Pretty cool. There's also Winfield Scott right there. Here's the playbill for our American cousin play that was being performed the night that Lincoln was killed. I also have uh, a life mask and a calling card and some other personal items of Lincoln's here. Well, the other day we saw the bullet that killed Lincoln. Well, here is the Derringer that it was fired from. This is John Wilkes Booth's gun that was used to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. Wow. So again, this is really, really dark in here. So I'm kind of pushing the limits of my camera, but this boot, I don't know if you can see it, kind of split there. This is the boot that was worn by John Wilkes Booth. And uh, after he shot Lincoln, he jumped down and busted his leg up and uh, a guy by the name of Dr. Mudd treated him. And then up here is the Spencer carbine that Booth carried during his escape. Wow. And then this horn-handled dagger right here was uh, also used by John Wilkes Booth. He uh, stabbed a guy by the name of Major Henry Rathbone after he shot Lincoln. Has the words Liberty and America engraved in it. And then these are the revolvers that were carried by Booth during his escape. Wow. Holy smokes. This is the pillow that was used to prop up Lincoln's head over at the Peterson house after he was shot and you can still see the blood stains on it. Holy smokes. And this is a piece of wood from a music stand that Booth used to wedge the door shut uh, 
for the door that, that went to the balcony. And you can see the door right there behind it. Wow. All right. Um, I just came upstairs. And we are entering the theater. So they've done something really interesting here. They've got a timeline for what April 14th looked like for Booth and also for Lincoln. So at 8 a.m. Lincoln is having breakfast and at 9 John Wilkes Booth is at the National Hotel getting up and getting ready and then it just kind of bounces back and forth between the two as you get closer and closer to the balcony. That spiral staircase that I just came up is the same one that Booth walked up during the play Our American Cousin and then he walked right here along the back on the second level went through this door right here barred it shut and then uh, waited for the right moment when the crowd was going to be laughing at a joke and uh, shot Lincoln right behind the left ear bullet lodged behind his right eye And wow, right there is the balcony that Lincoln and his wife were sitting in whenever Booth shot him in the back of the head. Then after that, Booth tried to escape, had a little bit of a mix-up, got his spur hung, and uh, fell down to the stage here. Man, oh man. Okay, well that was incredibly interesting. So I just left Ford's Theater and uh, now getting ready to go into the Peterson house where Lincoln was carried and uh, where where he died the next morning. Um, pretty, pretty fascinating stuff so far. So this is the rear parlor where Edwin Stanton kind of took control of the government and started the manhunt for John Wilkes Booth. And right in here is the bedroom where Lincoln died at 7.22 a.m. on April 15th. He had held on for about nine hours. Wow. Here they have different things from the aftermath funeral of Lincoln. Uh, these are some different coffin tools. There's a uh, coffin handle, funeral car key, and invitation to the funeral, and also some mourning cards. All right, well, that was awesome. Uh, just as a matter of personal preference, I think I enjoyed that more than I did the American History Museum. Um, man, American History just has like these certain points where they're, they're dividing marks and uh, the assassination of Lincoln is one of them. Uh, who knows what things would have looked like for African Americans had Lincoln not been assassinated. Or really even for the South. Jefferson Davis even said 10 years after the assassination of Lincoln that it, it was bad for the South because Lincoln had this policy of malice towards none. Um, but if you're in Washington, D.C., that is definitely a stop to make. Very, very cool place. Sweet heavenly days. Look at all of the books that have been written on Abraham Lincoln. Good grief.